Oh. Oh. Good morning. I am, it's not even morning right now. It is 12 o'clock noon. I just woke up at 11, which hasn't happened since I was, it hasn't happened in a long time. Um, I am beat. Like, I am straight up. I'm not hurt, but I am so, so sore from yesterday. Just taking a couple of weeks off snowboarding and then just going in, trying to jump over everything and on everything. I am sore. There's not a box coming in today. I have another box here that we're gonna unbox. And we'll take a look at the new Pharrell. Holy, and I think today is actually the the festival, so that's fitting, but I'm beat. Like, I still feel asleep right now. My body's just so tired. So I'm gonna take Omar for a walk and get some lunch. And then uh, hope that getting the blood flowing through my brain and the rest of my body make me feel like I haven't been in three car wrecks overnight. But right now, we're in car wreck mode. All right, I'm out. Peace. You wanna go outside? No! A smoothie, lunch, sandwich, and I'm still exhausted and tired and sore. Oh, Brandy and Ern had to go to the hospital because Brandy got hit by somebody, not Ern, someone on a snowboard. Oh, it's just, it's amazing. So we're headed up and we're like near Keystone and I'm like, Brand, just see how far Beaver Creek is. And she's like, all right, let me look. And because there was traffic like on nine, and it was gonna take an hour and 45 to get there. It was gonna take two hours to get to Beaver Creek. So I'm like, let's just go to Beaver Creek. We'll get there before 8.30. Cause I left so early cause we weren't sure if you were coming. So I'm like, let's just take the trip. We take one run. It's Brand's best run ever. Like no falling, she's turning, she's, you know, not completely keeping up, but like keeping up and, and loves it. And she's like, all right, let's go for another run. Doofy guy with these gloves, with these uh, wrist guards, like in them, like obvious beginner, but big dude. We all squish in, everybody's like wobbles in, almost oh, he's falls. On the lift with he's you. on the lift with us. And off the lift, Brand gets off, he gets off. I see everyone wobbling, holding on to the lift, okay, trying to let minute. everyone go. I get off last minute. See, and this dude goes down, just down, and his board goes up like this, and Brand, he just hits it and goes Psh. And at first, oh. <laughs> Yeah. The wind is just blowing. <laughs> We're just sitting there and I'm like, all right, I don't know how long we need. And then she looks down and her pants are ripped. And I go, she goes, I ripped my pants. I go, that's all right, dude, we'll patch it up. And then she's like, I ripped my other pants. I ripped my sock. And then she's like, my leg is cut open. There's blood all over my sock. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, we're taking the gondola down. Like six or seven. That's pretty good. The emergency room right on the mountain, and the lady looking at it straight up is like, there's urgent care right down the road. She's like, that is a fifth of the price of us. She's like, this is gonna cost you $2,500, like guaranteed, if the doctor has to do any stitches. Right down the road, fucking $75 copay. <laughs> Nice. So Brad, that's what stuff. it costs on the mountain. On the mountain, twenty five hundred in my. What they make you pay it? Like right then and there. No, no, they'll bill you. But the mountain, you know what uh, pisses? And this is what then you start thinking like this motherfucker was kind of his fault. Now no big deal if it's no harm no foul. But now my girl, I'm gonna pay. We're gonna pay twenty five hundred dollars. Still turning through the day. Uh, still feel pretty terrible. Just you know, sore. Well, uh, kind of relaxing day, I guess. I'm gonna work on some stuff here now. But first, go ahead and get this stuff. My beard's crazy. Um, first, I had this box. This would be a good segue, I guess. So shout out to, uh, shout out to Lapstone and Hammer, as they got this out to me. This is the, uh, well, we'll take a look at what it is, but you know what it is from the title. It's the Pharrell Holy Blank, on the blank canvas. Nice. Lapstone and Hammer with a discount code. Oh, this is the shoe. I actually doubled up on this shoe, and I'll explain why in a second. I doubled up on this because of what I want to do with one of the shoes, so, uh, but we'll get into that. Okay, so this is the box, regular human race box. I actually haven't looked at these yet. I have not looked once at them. This is me opening it for the first time. Um, oh, this is way nicer than the other Pharrells. Like, this is like, whoa. So the knit on this is 
crazy nice. Like it's just like nicer. And it's super cream in color. It's not white. The white is on the back, but the color of the shoe is cream. This is a beautiful shoe. I'm really glad I doubled up on it. So yeah, same shoe, the other shoe looks the same. The left and the right shoe look the same other than the right shoe says world. And then the left shoe, this is Hindi for equality. Don't know how to say the word in Hindi. I'm not even gonna try. But yeah, so we have another trail for real. And really the main thing, I mean, really this, this upper is just really nice. I mean, it's still PK and still feels stretchy. Very similar to the other uppers, but it just has like a, just a nicer feel to it. Almost just like, geez, I don't even know. It's, re it's really, really nice. So my idea, the reason I doubled up on these is because of the whole idea of the shoe. These are called the Holy because they, the Holy Pack represents the Holy Festival, which is also known as the Festival of Colors that takes place in India. Uh, Holy is a Hindu spring festival, represents winter being over, spring coming in, celebration of the harvest, Victory over good and evil. Kind of just like a turned up Thanksgiving slash day of reckoning slash just party. But a party with a purpose, you know? Like these are used, everyone shows up in clean attire like this. This is why we have the blank canvas. This same color as well, if you watch videos or look at articles about the Holy Festival, people are generally wearing this color. People just throw paint on each other. People decorate each other in color. And those colors represent different things to different people. People end arguments, reconcile, make new friends. Just a, a day of equality and a day of celebration, a day of reconciliation, fresh starts, you know? And trying to take those, uh, and and colors that represent different things to different people thrown onto you, you could take into the future. So let's just say that purple represents power to you and you get doused in purple. The idea, be able to take that power with you into the next year and prosper. Which is why I got two of them. Because one of them I am going to completely fucking destroy. I'm gonna wear them to tattoo in. I'm gonna get paint on them. I'm gonna do whatever. I mean, I would have gone to the Holy Festival and gotten them real hooked up. Maybe I'll just wait till next year and do it. But yeah, that's the whole reasoning behind the shoe and that's what I want to use it for. So I'll keep one clean and then the other one probably just get destroyed. So, um, But pretty much everything on this Pharrell is the same. I don't really see any differences other than the quality of that knit. It just looks really a lot nicer, almost just thicker. Everything else is pretty much the same. Uh, lettering still stitched in on this pair. Regular white Pharrell laces that kind of come with a more creamed color right lace as a secondary lace. Curl bottom and then just regular Pharrell stuff, you know, like trefoil, Pharrell Williams on the back. Cause I haven't put these on yet, I'm gonna slide one on just to make sure the fit's not any different. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little more snug getting on, but not crazy. Yeah, they're pretty much the same as all Pharrells. I don't feel any difference. They're great though, they're nice. Into it. But yeah, this is the Pharrell Holy Blink. Why is my light so bad? This is the Pharrell Ugh, the light makes it look pink. Here, now it doesn't look so pink. There's three more pairs coming. Uh, there's on the 16th of March. Yeah, 16th of March. A black pair, a more pinkish pair, and then a more purplish pair. And there's also clothing coming that's dyed in the same manner uh, with like a powder dye process, which also looks pretty crazy. So Adidas and Pharrell have kind of paid homage to this whole holy thing. Um, and then there's just the human race aspect in general. I do believe that Pharrell's idea behind this is or all the shoes are to make them your own. If you see Pharrell, he has a lot of clothing that he stitched on, added to, et cetera, et cetera. I think that's, I mean, Pharrell, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's his, his, his vibe is he gives you a canvas in general and it's your idea. It's, it's your responsibility to kind of tweak it, tweak it to fit your style. So um, yeah, super hype on these. Shout out to Lapstone for getting me these. I have another pair coming as well as a pair for, er not a pair of these for Ernie, but a little surprise for Ern. No, he doesn't deserve one. And well, maybe he does. I do love them. Do itself when it hits the light is completely different. When you're outside in the sun, the way the light hits it and it shimmers, sometimes it looks kind of gold. Really, really pretty. It's a really, really classy, pretty, clean, pure shoe. Really hyped to have gotten these, and I'm excited to destroy at least one pair of them. So.
I smoke a little orange mints. But I a little orange mints. Orange mints. I grind it. Stop. What are you even barking at, dude? Pull it. Take our filter. Now we just gotta roll it. Roll it. Boom, boom, boom. I'm a lighter. Okay, so. Let's talk about brands. Mainly my brand. Or brands, or whatever you wanna call it. So basically, uh, this is a discussion about, I guess, everything. So as a lot of you know, I have a shirt company, clothing company, that started off um, as the name, or under the name, Boost God. Those of you that don't know, I was given the name Boost God by fans, friends, people around, everyone. Once I started this channel, the name Boost God just sorta of was thrown at me, it stuck, and that's where we went. So to tell this story, we have to rewind a little bit. Even further than we just went. But before I started doing YouTube, I'd always worked um, on clothing. Not necessarily clothing design, but I'd always wanted to do a brand. If you go through my Instagram, you can see tons of like one type designs, like a lot of heavy black designs that I was just playing with, I was doing a lot artwork, a lot of paintings. Uh, the year prior to doing YouTube, I probably did something like 200, 300 paintings. Like I was just creating, 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 and didn't have really, I never knew how to bring that to the masses. I never knew how to scale that to a point where it was obtainable by everyone. Clothing and all that stuff was cool, but there was no brand name. There was no, there's no blanket to put under, under, and I could never like come up with anything. And every time I would try to come up with something, it always felt forced, fake, and just kind of just like not me, you know? So it didn't really like dwell on any of that stuff and it wasn't my main focus I was still tattooing so I was you know it was just something that I was doing and me and Sager had even talked about doing it together before that kind of laid dormant in my subconscious for a long time talk about it all the time whatever whatever so uh, fast forward to the vlog fast forward to the vlog gaining some popularity making a t-shirt for myself you know me and Sager made run and MD t-shirts for ourselves wore that on the vlog that kind of took off you know that was like pretty much wore that and everybody wanted one that saw it well not everybody but a lot of people wanted it that saw it we didn't have a name like we had even talked about doing merch like for the YouTube channel like small merch like okay let's do just some shirts so what are you gonna call it and I was trying to come up with all these names and I had all these names like extra laces box fresh and all this like very sneaker oriented shit you know and to me it's shit like I don't like it what happened organically we went with boost God and then I remember having a conversation even with Sega our people our humans are not gonna buy shit this is boost God that's not what they want like, they don't want that people went crazy over it like super crazy so we did Boost God, that's what people were calling me. Everything was hunky dory, everything was selling out, growing, doing more stuff. I did a tour, uh, pop ups, etc. So, as time has gone on with this Boost God brand, a few things happened cosmically at the same time, close enough to each other, that made things kind of go south. So, while traveling, while doing in store appearances or whatever, pop ups, finding trouble in certain places to get these appearances, I did find out that some people within the company of Adidas weren't super hype on me in general, and I think thought where I was kind of stepping on their toes in the marketing department. I don't have absolute confirmation of that. I heard enough stuff from enough people that it was just kind of like, okay, some people aren't really jiving with me, which is fine. At the same time, there was other entities that use the word boost who were working out that their situation is trying to trademark their name so that they could operate without any kind of flack from Adidas. Because Adidas has started to at this point, and this is about this is a year ago, over a year ago, at this point it started to, I don't want to say come after, but stop letting people who are using the word boost in anything, uh, especially for sale, they were they're putting a stop to that. And I felt when it happened was super aggressive, that kind of came out of nowhere, because as some of you know. In the past, Adidas and Sibby Shoes. You guys know that I rock heavy with Adidas. You guys know that a lot of people in Adidas rock heavy with me. Um, I enjoy all of the, not, well I don't enjoy all the products. I enjoy the majority of the products. All the people that I've met in Adidas, like designers, store employees, retail, marketers, advertising, like all kinds of people that I've met are all amazing, amazing people. But we cannot forget that Adidas is a corporation, and a very big corporation at that. What happened in this, and these are things that I knew would happen. The original Boost God lettering 
font, Boost God, with the stripes through it, and the running MD, and the Kanye West shirt with the boost, were all sent a cease and desist. Now two out of these three, when I started this on a very punk rock mentality, I knew was going to happen. I absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, knew eventually that I would catch flack for this. So I wasn't surprised, and it was all good, like we talked to Adidas, to the lawyers, we did everything, we spent a bunch of money dealing with them. And we just pulled those shirts, and that was around the same time. Prior to that, I had kind of moved on to the symbol. And the symbol, for those of you that don't know, I'll put it up on the screen. So this, I'd moved to the symbol already, which that symbol is an old signature of mine that has broke apart. I used to sign paintings with this TS. TS looks like this. So I used to sign paintings with that. I broke it apart to make it have the T and the S to have the cross, just more just still the T cross and then the S down there have it make the shape of the B and the G. Before any legal shit I'd already sort of just moved on to it because I was never a huge huge fan of the whole boost god vibe like the whole like I, the name is cool or whatever but it's not doesn't have that vibe of what i would look to create if i was creating it you know like it doesn't have like there were pieces in there that i could use to learn more stuff about making product but it wasn't actually the brand that i wanted you know what i'm saying if that makes any sense it just wasn't my vision but it was working and it was helping us get to the next level you know i was just going to keep designing and i tried to design my way out of it. I tried to like, did. I incorporated a lot of different stuff that had nothing to do with shoes or lettering and you know, bring in more of the tattoo stuff and the stuff I like to draw. Dealing with Adidas on, lighter go, my joint went out. So, dealing with the lawyers on this cease and desist situation, um, everything was cool. Like we took down those designs, we moved the symbol, we took the name, we took the words Boost God off of the actual website, like stuff like that. Everything was cool for like a minute, like a very short minute. And then Adidas doubled down and said they wanted me to stop using the word Boost God at all. Like take it off of everything, you're not allowed to. And at that point, I basically was like, fuck you. Basically like, that's bullshit. You guys send me shoes. I'm helping you guys. Like, you guys obviously co-sign me here and there. Like, this is fucked up. All of that happened. I wanted to like obviously freak out. I obviously wanted to just like go off, da 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 da. And I didn't, you know, we just dealt with it. I just like kept it moving. And we'd already kind of transitioned to the symbol and I took it sort of as this blessing in disguise. Just didn't know what to do. But that day, the day that, that I discovered that we got a serious, like, you can no longer do Boost God. We spent thousands of dollars on, on legal shit to deal with this. It was the day that I discovered that the symbol that I had created that has the B of the G, that when you turn it sideways, it says Ted. I didn't do that on purpose. I didn't design that on purpose. Like, I really didn't, and it just worked out. So I saw that as just a lane. I saw that as like an opening. I saw that as the universe is telling me that I'm on the right path. This is just a small thing. Like your name is your name and you're good. And your name's not Boost God. You know, your name's Ted. Your name's Teddy. Theodore. Theo. T. Whatever you want to call me. Asshole. I don't care. But my name's not Boost God. So, so yeah, that kind of stung a little bit. And I started to do a little investigating to find out why this even happened. You know, like why would Adidas come after me? You know, like I, and then I came to find out through investigation that someone else who I don't know, who I have no idea who they are, I don't have their name somewhere, but uh, tried to trademark Boost God. And so once they sent out a trademark request, like when you send out a trademark request, um, people who may have interest in that trademark or already have, you know, proprietary space in that trademark are informed. And so when that happened, and that trademark was applied for, that shut everything down. You know, and even some of the people at Adidas thought that it was me that was applying for the trademark, which I was not. I'd already talked to a lawyer about applying for a trademark and was told the information that I just shared with you. So I was just letting it fly. Nobody was fucking with me. It was all essentially what got that ball rolling, which got the attention of the legal team at Adidas, is me being kind of everywhere, but also someone else trying to fuck me. You know, and when they tried to fuck me, all they really did was bless me, you know, because it got me to just do something different because I wasn't satisfied. So we fast forward, we have the symbol. We've, I'd been using the symbol before we even dropped the name officially. I don't remember what the last thing we put out was with the name. I want to say it was the towels, but I could be wrong, but that was one of the last things. Just to let you guys know how long this has been going on. And, and I don't want to say anything because this is not, I don't want to say anything now. And I'm not mad about any of this. I'm explaining it because I want people to understand my vision for the brand or my brand or a brand. We have the symbol, we're rocking the symbol, we're dropping all kinds of stuff with the symbol. Signature, whatever you would call it. 
Then comes in AI. So artificial intelligence to me, I was inspired in artificial intelligence by just doing research, really. Like I, getting stoned and watching a lot of Elon Musk talks and reading and listening and watching things about AI and just getting interested in it. And then I just started to understand something about myself and my position and me as a human being, I possess these things that became popular. You know, it's like the vlog to me is popular. I know some people think this is a small channel, but to me and like what I desire, this is popular. The artwork that I do is popular and the clothing that I sell is popular. And this all came from within me. Like these are just things that I was drawing and like putting out and the world was accepting it. And what it took for that to happen because just as a human and not being able to really reach everybody, um, the internet is what made that happen. Like the marriage between man and machine is what made me finally reach a point that I was trying to reach. And that was like kind of the basis of artificial intelligence. Like without this, Without this machine, without all this stuff, I wouldn't be in this position that I'm in. That I'm in. It's sort of an homage to the benefits of AI, while also trying to create a label that existed that, or that would exist in the future. You know, like a clothing streetwear brand that would exist in the future and just kind of making t-shirts, you know, or starting with t-shirts, that just sort of just paint that picture, like this futuristic approach to design. Not necessarily in the clothing, I'm not talking about like pressing a button and having your clothes take over your whole body because I can't afford to do the research and development, but that was the whole idea. Kind of like a polo sport for the year fucking 3060. And then the AI camo pack dropped with Adidas, which felt very weird to me. And I may have overstepped some boundaries. I hit some people up through Adidas when the AI camo pack came out because I kind of felt like they were going to come after me again on some shit. And I invested a ton of money into AI, me and Sager both. So we were like super just kind of like, this is fucked up. And it didn't end up happening. Nothing happened. Like AI was fine. No one touched us. It was great. Like, whew, great. You know? During all this while developing AI, I had drawn, come up with these designs, this you are your enemy and uh, something that I would wanted to do. But that in itself had sparked from a couple of things. Um, one of those things mainly being myself. And one of those things being that I've stood in my own way so many fucking times in life. You know, it's like I have come out um, angrily or responded out of just sheer automation, sunken down into my ego so far to feel like I was winning a fight that eventually fucked me down the road. You know, I've said things to people that have just torn them to pieces and burnt down their entire foundations and felt good about it before and then later on to find out that that information that butterfly effect is what fucked me later you know and the same thing happened here like i wanted to jump on the internet and denounce adidas and get inside my ego and feel like i was entitled to all this shit and, and this is just my initial response like once i'm told like you can't do this anymore you know and it's like how dare them and da, 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 you know and i just wanted to like fucking rage you know like i wanted to rage and i didn't you know and i'm a firm believer that I mean, I, I guess I sort of believe in reincarnation, but I think that we're reincarnated daily, you know, and I think that you're given a lot of opportunities to change how you respond to things. You're given opportunities to change the makeup of who you are, who you tell yourself you are. And I, at that point, had a moment of clarity where I realized coming out of on this information in an angered way, being like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, was not the way. The fucking way to get through this was to talk to myself. And the thing that I needed to tell myself the most was that I needed to shut the fuck up. Nobody had really taken anything from me, you know? Like, I still had the power of design. I still had the power to draw. I still had the audience. I still had people that wanted clothing. I have some of you that will fucking follow me to wherever I go because you know I'm not gonna lead you astray. Like, there's all kinds of shit that I still had and that I wasn't paying attention to. And because I was just mad, you know? I was like angry that somebody was fucking with me. Things fuck with you from time to time. The world is gonna fuck. Life is gonna fuck with you. People are gonna fuck with you. Companies might fuck with you, but it does, you know, that little piece, this one little issue or whatever, doesn't mean that I hate the shoe, the designer, the guy who, you know, mar the marketers, my friends that work there. Like, I don't hate any of that stuff. So I can't just blanket everything in with one thing and I can't just burn burn this shit to the ground, not that I could burn it deeds to the ground, but I can't just like volley against something that I've so openly said that I care about because I still love the shoes and I still love all this stuff. So I just knew, I knew that and that was where You Are Your Enemy came from, as well as some people in my life that I also feel like stand in their own. That's what it is, like it's this, just this mantra to fucking like, like just chill, you know what I mean? Like there's a Twain quote, you know, and it's life is 99% your response. I butcher the quote, but like 99% of the shit that happens is, is your response, you know, or like, or what you think is gonna happen versus what really happens. That's not even a quote, forget the Twain part. That's just like what it is. That's where I was with it. I just, 
I just knew that I needed to just do something different. I needed to not throw a bitch fit. I needed to not look for attention and the negativity and just flip it, you know? And You Are Your Enemy is one of my favorite things that I've ever created. I love it. Top two of my of my favorite things that I've made. So yeah, like I'm really into it and I continue to do it and it continues to speak to me all the time. Like each design, I mean, these things come from me. I just sit down and draw them. So like each design is a piece of me and each design is maybe even a silent piece of some of the things that you guys don't see happening in my life. Saving ourselves from ourselves, it's huge. You know, something that I learn to do all the time, every day. Don't get it twisted. I still talk shit to you on the internet because it's fun. And now this leads us to Happy Cry. Happy Cry is my baby right now. And Happy Cry is like, it's a little bit of everything. So Happy Cry is me. You know, Happy Cry is like, if you look at the other designs, like the reveal shirt, the shirt I'm wearing right now, the Happy Cry guy coming out of the skeleton, like being half skeleton, half cartoon. Um, that is a fucking separation. Like that is me showing this separation, this art style, these skulls and daggers and all of these things that are either highly romantic or highly somber. They have these like raw human emotions, um, death, love, all these things. Uh, that's me coming out of that as a spirit. Like I feel like Happy Cry is sort of the spirit. What it means to me is because I'd finally discovered what I was looking for in the beginning. You know, I'd never had a brand name and I always thought that I needed one and I realized that I don't. And the idea of the whole brand, if it's me, if I'm just portraying me, is to be sort of like water and just ebb and flow and create things as I want to create them. And if one day I want to make a Christmas sweater, like being able to make a Christmas sweater and not being like, well, you know, we don't really do stuff like that. Hear it, hear it, da 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 brand. We don't do that. Like that's not fitting in our vibe. Like I never wanted to like typecast myself into just being like, oh, you just put out box logos or you just put out this or you can't do that. You can't put that on a shirt. Like I just want to make stuff when I want to make and happy cry is that like it's the it's a mind fuck because it's a brand name that I didn't want to have a brand name but it's the celebration of it it's the celebration of me realizing that I can kind of do whatever I want if I just stay creative like I don't have to box myself in and it's also the evidence or it's also like the the, the context of all the shit that I've been through the last year and a half where I'm just like want to keep a smile on my face or do keep a smile on my face for the most part I know that people think I'm a dick um, just being able to to grin and bear it through the bullshit and not become affected patting myself on the back for doing a good job and not doing what I always did and it's just that happy cry moment that moment of joy where like you've been through so much you still have so far to fucking go but you're just happy the same thing like pretending to be happy everywhere you go and still dealing with this turmoil on the inside and being able to navigate it and being able to like continue to move and grow and helping yourself through design you know and that's what I've done that's what happy cry is to me it's literally I want to cry tears of joy because I love my life absolutely a great life I look around all the time and I feel insanely blessed to have the shit that I have you know like especially from where I came from and I know a lot of people have that story like, oh, I came from the dirt, you know, like, and I'm not saying that I came that I know people have had it harder than me, but it feels good to come out of fucking the pits, you know, and we all have our own pit and it just feels good. There were a lot of days where I had to pretend like everything was okay, you know, and there's a lot of days where everything wasn't okay, you know, or at least I had told myself it wasn't. And this reminds me, happy cry reminds me that like, it's not, it is okay. Like what's happening to me or what I perceive is happening to me it's happening because I need it. It's happening because it's leading me to where I've told the universe I want to go. And that's what it is. It's a celebration of all of that. And it finally just gave me something that I fuck with, you know? And it, when I look at it, when I hear the words happy cry, when I see the labels, when I see the stuff that I'm making, it reminds me of a skateboard brand that I would have been obsessed with when I was a kid. And that just brings me fucking joy. Makes me want a happy cry, you know? So it's just, yeah, I mean, that's the best way that I can explain it. That's the best way that I can tell you the story of what has happened. So when people ask me, like, why I don't get certain things, like, there's a lot of people in Adidas that love me and work, look out for me. You guys know that. You've seen evidence of it. But when I don't get certain things, like this milk box that you guys are, like, going crazy on the internet because they sent it to other people and not me, one, I don't care. It's fine. I, I want the cookies. So if anyone's got the cookies, just send them to me. I just want one for my shelf. It's not a big deal. There's politics in everything. I don't know who um, is responsible for the politics in this situation, but it doesn't bother me. I've done plenty to sell Ultra Boost. I've been thanked for it by the people that matter to me, and that's pretty much it. And I have no bad blood with Adidas as far as the Boost God term goes. Again, just many things all happening at once that 
all are leading me to where my heart desires to go in life. And that's why when people talk about this channel being about just shoes and just a sneaker channel, um, they're lost. Like they don't know what they're even watching. And that doesn't bother me. You know, perception is a motherfucker. We've all got our own. But yes, that is the story. That is why you're not getting Boost God stuff again because I get asked all the time. Those are the explanations behind each brand that I create, but everything is under the umbrella of the symbol. You can still call me Boost God. You can't take that away from me. My social medias stay Boost God because whatever, but I might just change it as the, to the artist formerly known as Boost God, unless they'll let me put my symbol up there like Prince. But that's it, and there's no bad blood, and there's not a single negative feeling in me about it other than having to waste money. That's the only thing that feels like kind of upsetting, but even that is a fucking trick with my ego because money is just energy you don't really know where it comes from just fucking comes so no ill will towards anyone other than maybe the asshole that tried to like trademark the shit but even him you know it's like i wish you the best it's just whatever like it all is gonna lead me to where i want to go everything and that is having faith and just letting go and letting your intentions come into fruition that's the brand it will always just be me it's perfect that the channel name is Oh It's Teddy. If someone asks you who made that shirt, just say, Oh, Teddy. You can call it Boost God, you can call it Ted, you can call it Theodore, you can call it AI, you can call it whatever you want. I plan on staying free, and I plan on just moving to and from and in and out of vibes as I see fit and making stuff that hopefully people feel and connect to and, uh, you know, just experiencing this thing called life with y'all. Hopefully that cleared some stuff up. I'm out.